We're going to do an example problem so we can understand how to work with centripetal force. This example problem involves a merry-go-round. And in my experience, uh, we live in such a litigious society that you guys don't even know what a merry-go-round is. So I have for you a video of a merry-go-round taken a couple of years ago across the street from my house. Wait, guys, do you know, do you know, do you know, that's a merry-go-round. All right, ready, one, one, two, three. I don't know why we don't have them so much anymore, but we don't. They're, they're, they're evidently dangerous, just like teeter-totters. There's all sorts of dangerous things. All right, so in this example, we're gonna do page 261, practice problem number three. Page 261, practice problem number three. Uh, we're gonna have Laura, if you could please read, and Nick Bacher, if you could please translate. So the dog is over here, and the distance from the very center of the dog is 1.5 meters. So Knickerbocker, what do you think that is? Um, that's the radius, right? That's the distance from the very center where it's spinning from. So that is the radius. Now, the question that they've asked is not nearly as challenging nor as much fun as what we're going to do. We're going to figure out the coefficient of static friction between the dog and the merry-go-round. I think you all agree that the dog is not holding on to the merry-go-round, right? Sure. So there is a coefficient of static friction between the dog and the merry-go-round, which is helping to hold the dog on the merry-go-round. What is our next step, please? Strauss. Um. Find the angular acceleration. We have the angular acceleration. Six point five. Oh, I'm sorry. The angular acceleration. We actually know the angular acceleration. Who can tell me what the angular acceleration is? John. Zero. Because we're at a constant angular velocity. I know it's been a little while because chapter five was about energy. Chapter six was about momentum. But this goes back to using stuff we learned in chapter four, grammar. We have to draw a free body diagram. We have to draw a free body diagram. We are going to review using free body diagrams. Class, step one, draw the free body diagram. Step two. No. Label. Label. No, that's part of drawing the free body diagram. Who can tell me step two? Break forces into components. After we've broken forces into components, class, the next step is to? No. Redraw the free body diagram. Let's start over from the very beginning. Step one. Step two. Break forces into components. Step three. Step four. Step five. Sum the forces in one direction is step four. Step five. Sum the forces in the other direction, which is perpendicular to the direction to sum the forces in. So remember, we have our five step process. OK. We need to now draw our free body diagram. Josh, give me a free body diagram for the dog on the merry go Is? Which is? 
So I'm going to put this centripetal force that right here in the free body diagram. That's my plan. Is that a good idea? No. No, it's never in a free body diagram. Yes. You guys are going to feel compelled to put a centripetal force in the free body diagram class. Is a centripetal force ever in a free body diagram? No. No. Josh, what you got? So that force. Just give me other forces first. Let's start there. Force of gravity going down. Force normal going up. Okay. Those are clearly two forces um, that are going to be acting on the dog. Other forces acting on the dog. Force of friction. The force of what kind of friction? Static friction. Okay, the force of static friction acting inward. Now, the force of static friction is what prevents the dog from sliding off the merry-go-round. Great. We've drawn our free body diagram. Class, do we have any forces to break into components? Any, any forces to break into components? No. So we don't need to redraw the free body diagram. So what is our next step? Please. Um, come. The forces in the y direction. Go ahead. <laughs> force normal minus force of gravity. Equals? Equals the mass times acceleration in the y direction. Good. What's the acceleration in the y direction? Zero, so equals zero. So force normal minus force of gravity equals zero. Keep going. Force normal. Then you can add force of gravity to both sides. So force normal equals force of gravity, which equals mass times. Acceleration. Good class. Do we know the mass of the dog? Yes. Do we have a number, Spencey? Yes. yes. Not anymore. <laughs> Good. So we're not going to plug in the mass. Why would we do that? Yes, Andy. Um, why is there not a force applied? Ah, what would be applying a force? I mean, it's spinning. So isn't there something that's like, like wanting to push him out? Shouldn't it be like a force outward? Yeah. Ah, force outward. Okay. What would be causing him to go outward? I don't know what it is, it just it happens. Like, <laughs> Question. Yes, Meredith. What no, the, the kinetic friction is if, if he's moving relative to the merry-go-round. Headlift. No There's nothing pushing the dog outward. Remember, the inertia of the dog tries to keep the dog moving in a straight line. Your interpretation of this is that it's moving outward, but the dog doesn't go outward. The dog Dog tries to move in a straight line, just like the number we did in class where you were sitting in the car, not wearing your seatbelt. You collide into the right-hand door, not because you move toward the door, but rather because the door moves toward you. The dog doesn't move outward. The dog tries to move in a straight line. The dog is continually moving inward toward the center of the circle rather than moving in a straight line, and it's the centripetal force that is moving that dog inward. All right. Now, we've drawn our free body diagram. We didn't have anything breaking the components. We summed our forces in the y direction. Please tell me, quickly, in what direction are we now going to sum the forces in? X. No, unfortunately, we're not going to sum the forces in the x direction. I'll talk about y in just a moment. I will repeat my question to see if it helps. Nick, in what direction are we going to sum the forces in? Oh, you know, I'm sorry, it is not that. I will try it for the third time. <clears throat> Josh, in what direction are we going to sum the forces in? Good call. We're going to sum the forces in the in direction. It's okay. Okay. I will sum the forces in the in direction. In a moment, we'll talk about the difference between the in and the x direction and make sure you understand why this works out. Okay. Sum the forces in the in direction, please. Uh, Christina, sum the forces in the indirection for me, looking at our dog. Read about it back there. Minus, uh, the negative force of static friction is this equal to? Remember, this is the net force in the indirection is always equal to? Ah, uh, but C doesn't stand for circular. Centripetal acceleration, the acceleration in the indirection, which is the centripetal acceleration. Emma? Um, the force of static friction should be positive. Notice, the force of static friction is inward, which is positive. We have such an ingrained habit 
that to the left is negative, to the right is positive, etc. You need to realize when you sum the forces in the in direction, you throw that all out the door. In is positive, out is negative. So it ends up being the positive force of static friction. So let's talk about for a moment the difference between summing the forces in the in direction and summing the forces in the x direction in this particular case. So we have our dog on the merry-go-round, the dog represented by the piece of tape. He is spinning, we'll have him going this way. You can see as he's spinning, he's in different locations. So right here is where we drew our free body diagram. But we could draw the free body diagram at any location when he's here. So we could have drawn the free body diagram right here. In this particular case, class, what direction would the force of static friction have been? To your right. What about if the dog were right here? It'd be forward. If the dog were right here? Toward you. Notice, if we sum the forces in the indirection, the direction of that force of static friction is actually constantly changing direction. So we can't really sum the forces in the, x, in, in the x direction. If we instead sum the forces in the in direction, that force is always inward towards the center of the circle. So it's always positive. In other words, I could have drawn my free body diagram on the other side. The force of static friction would be to the right, the force normal would be up, the force of gravity would be down. But notice that the force of static friction, regardless of the fact that it's to the left here and to the right here, is always inward, which is always positive. We now have the force of static friction equals mass times centripetal acceleration. What are we going to do now? Sam, what can we do? Coefficient static friction, correct. Okay. And so now we need to sum the other forces. We already, we already sum the forces in the wider. Okay. Yeah. Yep. So force of static friction. Yes. We know that the equation for force of static friction is the coefficient of static friction times the force normal. Good, we can substitute that in. What else can we do? Uh, and um, can we substitute the equation for um, centripetal uh, yeah. acceleration for... I'm sorry, say it. Cent centripetal acceleration. Got to be able to say these things. Good, centripetal yeah. acceleration. Um, for mass times radius times omega squared. We can substitute in R times omega squared because we know that's the equation for centripetal acceleration. We know we have R and omega. Good. What else can we do? Remember, uh, force, force normal equals F of mass times G. We know we have, we've already figured out that the force normal equals mass times the acceleration gravity. We can substitute in for the force normal. It's equal to mass times the acceleration due to gravity. Con. Everyone brought mass to the party. No, we said that the angular acceleration is equal to zero. The angular acceleration is equal to change in, uh, change in angular velocity over change in time. Right, because the change in angular velocity is what's zero. So it's the angular acceleration which is zero, not the centripetal acceleration. Good. So we have figured out the coefficient of static friction it is equal to r, which is 1.5 times the angular velocity, which is 6.5 which we square divided by g, which is 9.8, the coefficient of static friction. 6.4668 with sig figs, we get 6.5, 6.5 what, Andy? What are the dimensions of the coefficient of static friction? In other words, the answer is the coefficient of static friction between the dog and the merry-go-round is 6.5. That's it. We're just going to go on. Okay. Is it that a high? What's kind of a maximum value for the coefficient of static friction? One. Plus? One. Well, maybe we could probably get higher than that. Maybe we could probably even get up to two if we just dumped it. Therefore, what happens 
to our dog. Headler. Dog isn't going to stay on the merry-go-round. Our book abuses this dog. Look at what they've done. They put this dog in the merry-go-round. They set him up for failure. There's no way this dog could stay on. 6.5 coefficient of static friction. This dog is going to fly right off that merry-go-round. They didn't think what they were doing, did they? We took this problem. We went beyond this, what the problem stated. We figured out what's actually happening to the dog. They just said, eh, figure out the net force acting on the dog. No, we know. The dog is not going to stay on that merry-go-round. Someone needs to report this book to PETA. <laughs> I cannot believe it. OK. So what, in this particular case, is the centripetal force acting on the dog, or trying to act on the dog, to keep the dog on the merry-go-round? Wicked. It's okay, help her out. Who can, who can answer this question? What is the force keeping the dog, or trying to keep the dog on the merry-go-round? Lily. Static friction. The force of static friction. Remember, the centripetal force is the net force in the indirection. It's not a new force. In this particular case, the centripetal force, the net force in the indirection is the force of static friction. So that's what the centripetal force is in this particular case. 